So here's the ancient pyramid, or as my boy Patty likes to call it, Egypt. Fun fact, for some reason I used to call this world a temple, but it's not a temple, it's a pyramid, so I don't know why I called it that. Anyway, to start this one off, you want to jump up here, up to this thing, because you know I refer to most things in this game as things. Maybe like a snake statue or something, I don't know what to call it. Anyway. You gotta jump up here. If you really need the health for some reason, there's a piece of bread up here. You can go get that. But you're just gonna run off of this and Kate mash all the way down. So jump up here. Kate mash down here. Now this is important. You see that I'm being pushed to the left. There's sand currents in this world. Actually, no, it's in the second level too. But yeah, there's sand currents in this world. So, you want to avoid the ones that are pushing you the opposite direction like this. And you want to run with the current that's pushing you forward. It's similar to upslopes and downslopes. It's actually almost exactly the same in terms of speed running. See how fast Aladdin's going there though? And see how slow he's going when he's going against the current? So that's why we start the level by jumping up here and then cape mashing all the way down. And this part's a little tricky too. You just need to follow my movement here. Just wanna do a jump where you land basically right about here. Because if you land too far and then you try to jump again, you're gonna get hit by this sand bat. So you wanna land about here, jump right away, and just do another immediate jump when you land. So jump, jump, land. Jump here, jump, jump, jump land and then the current from this point from up here onward it pushes you forward so once you get here just run with the current and at the very end of it do a full jump onto this next piece of bread that you're going to encounter so here full jump don't cape mash don't cape mash this at all just do a full jump onto here and then jump back up here. And you're probably better off just running a little bit here. Because it's really easy to jump again and catch yourself on this pot or catch yourself on this chest. And you obviously don't want to jump on this because it has that bonus thing going. And that's actually really easy to accidentally grab. So once again, jump all the way up here, cape mash down, jump here, jump, jump, and see? See what I mean there? If you jump too far, or if you do too high of a jump after this, you'll get hit by the sand bat. So this is just another spot, you just gotta copy what I'm doing, feel it out. Should be okay if you land like right here. You just don't want to land up here, because you'll get hit. And don't worry about this sand bat spawning either, it's not going to hit you, just run past it. Do a full jump onto this bread, no cape mashing, just a full jump. I'll do it one more time. Bam, just like that. This part's a little tricky as well. We should be able to get it down with some practice. Basically jump to here, jump to this flat ground.
grab this hook, land on the bottom current here because this current's pushing you forward. And then you're going to land on that first sand platform, but be careful because as you just saw, they disintegrate after a bit. You'll land on that platform and you'll jump onto the second hook here. Be careful of that sand bat as well, because that sand bat will hit you if you don't jump over it. Also, make sure you K-mash a little bit to this platform here, or else you'll do the mistake that I, you just saw me make. So a little bit of cape, grab this hook, drop down, jump over, jump onto this one, jump onto this top ledge here, and then cape all the way to this second to last platform. This one is going to push you forward, so just be prepared for that. You don't have much room to land and then jump. And if you land on one of these two, the current's going the opposite way. So... It kind of messes with, with your mind a little bit if you mess up this part. A lot of the time you'll kind of get confused and then you'll you'll miss the ledge. You'll drop down here and die. When jumping at this hook, you could throw an apple right beforehand to apple this archer. That'll save you about five frames of lag if I remember correctly. Which is no big deal, you don't have to do it. It's only a couple frames, but it's also really easy to do, so I feel it's worth mentioning here. Just like that. Cape to the second to last one. And then if you want to, just run off of this, and then right at the end, cape mash. Just like that. If you're comfortable enough, you can try doing two jumps like this. But that only saves four frames at the very most. And you have to do a really small jump at the end there. So you don't overshoot the end of the level trigger. So in my opinion for beginners, it's better to just do a full jump and just cape mash to the end. Just like that. That's really simple. For the beginning of this level, this is where fast cape mashing matters. Because you need to mash pretty fast to get under this first pot bird. I'll show here if I just do like a couple, you're gonna get hit. So you actually wanna mash pretty fast here. Like that. There you go. And then you're going to land in the middle here. Just avoid the subslope. Jump immediately. You'll get under the popper that's up here. Just like that. You can grab this hook. And then you know, let go in normal time and go through here. Alternatively, you could try to do this if you're more comfortable just going through like that. Either one's okay. You just gotta choose whatever's comfortable. So again, you can wait here, jump through like that. But be careful, because as you just saw, these spikes do damage, so if you try to jump too early, you will get hit. So I like to just grab the hook and do this, but e either one is good. If you want an extra heart, there's one over here. You can grab that.
I'd say the best way to probably do it. I mean, you could just do that if you want. If you have more than one heart. Because you're going to get the refill there anyway. So really, whatever you do doesn't really matter here. You can go up that way if this is more comfortable for some reason. You can just do this as well. But if you don't want to ledge grab this platform, you need to jump like right at the end of this flat ground and do a full jump. It's actually a bit tricky. And don't be surprised if you ledge grab by accident. And I'm just going to show here how close you have to be to the edge of this flat ground to be able to reach it. So this next coming part is not too bad. I'm not even going to show the optimal strat because it's really difficult and you should not be bothering with it. It only seems, saves 20 frames at best, and it's just not worth it. It's really, really difficult. The top players still miss it sometimes, so it's not worth teaching at a more beginner level. So I'll show you the old strat. So what you do here, you jump up, grab the sledge, grab the hook. And when you grab this hook, the sand bat will hit you and you'll have invincibility frames to jump up the rest of them because it spawns another sand bat after that well it spawns two more actually just like this there you go And even if you have some trouble jumping up these, you have plenty of invincibility frames to make it. And see, if you don't do it, then you're going to have trouble here. So just grab onto the hook, wait for the boost, and you're good. There's apples here, by the way. If you're really uncomfortable with the genie apples for some reason, then you can get these. Just throw it like that. But you see how slow that is? Because you have to wait for the 60 frame invincibility from the apples. So yeah, have to apple them, stand there for a few seconds, and then go. And then for here, jump onto this platform. You're going to bounce off this uh, last uh, bouncy thingy. Let me get back here, by the way. There we go. You're going to bounce off there. And just follow, just follow what I'm doing here. This is pretty straightforward. You can bounce off of that one and go here. This is the only real tricky part here. If you want to avoid the bounce, you need to jump at the edge here. And then hold your cape. But if you don't want to do that, the bouncy thing is like right next to the platform. Just make sure you're not holding the jump button or else you're going to miss it. So you can just like do that if you want. So bounce, go to this, go here, bounce off that if you want. And then here. Just use this bit of downslope. Don't run down it and then walk here. Just run down it a little bit, do a small jump. 
to keep that forward momentum. Bounce off the first thing, bounce off this one, bounce off here. Just make sure you don't take damage from this spike. So bounce off the first one, bounce off the third one, then the fifth. And that's it. Don't go crazy with your cape mashing at the end here, because you won't have enough room to get over this spike, and it'll hit you. I'll try to demonstrate. Oh, that barely made it over, but you, you can see what I mean. If you're not, like, really good with it, then you're going to get hit. So just be careful there. Otherwise, this is relatively easy. You can just hold your cape out there, and you're fine. And I mean, if you're, if you're not comfortable with doing this small downslope and then jumping here, I mean, sure, you can just run this whole thing. I don't really know why earlier I said that you shouldn't. I was just thinking about optimization, but really, when you're starting out, you should really just do whatever's most consistent. So if you want to run like that, that's all good. You'll still make this just fine. Just do exactly what I'm doing here. And you can hold the jump button the whole time through this. If it makes it easier to make sure you get the full jumps off of these things. Because if you don't... I'll demonstrate it a few times. If you don't get these full jumps, it... You, you see how quickly this can go downhill. So, if you want to hold the jump button the entire time through this more power to you. You just don't want this part to go wrong and do an accidental short bounce anywhere. Like this. See how easy it is to die. So this level is the second most difficult in the game when you're starting out. When you get to a more advanced level, you can understand it better. But when you're starting out, and even at an intermediate level, this level is still very tough. So I'm going to try to do the best I can to walk you through it. So right away, all of these hooks... They're on a level timer. So you really want to make sure you're doing the same thing every time. Because if you mess up one thing, you're going to throw these hook patterns off. And that's really going to screw you up at the end. So if you want to do a couple K mashes here to get some frames, so be it. If you don't want to, just run across. You want to go towards the end of this flat ground and then jump and cape, and then jump over this archer. You kind of want to be close to here to get that jump, because if you jump like from here, that'll happen. And then you're going to take a damage boost off of those spikes. And I really advise to start turning left really early. It's much safer than turning later. Because if you boost this way by accident, you're going to screw up everything. Also, if you want, you can throw an apple here like that and get rid of that archer if jumping over him is too difficult. Just throw it on the way down like that. But yeah, just turn early. And then you'll have the invincibility to just jump up here while the archer is there.
turn early, go here. And then take this down slope to the final gem and do a short jump so you grab onto the hook as quick as possible. And then you really want to make sure you get the full jump off of the hook. Because if you don't, like this, you'll grab the next hook and then once again you'll throw off everything for the end of this level. I'll just demonstrate. See how quickly things go bad. So just in general, the most important thing about this level is to just try to be consistent. And if something goes wrong, just know that the hooks are very likely going to screw you. So grab onto here. Do a full jump so you avoid these two hooks here. Jump onto this ledge. Cape over this guy. You also want to land on the left side of this flat ground. Because if you go to land here, see how he shoots up? You don't want that to happen, because when you go to jump again, it's going to hit you. So just make sure. Just jump like at the middle here. So if you jump at the middle, you'll land right on the edge. And you see he'll shoot forward, and you can jump over. But if you try to do something like this, see how he shoots straight upward? You don't want that to happen. So just jump from the middle here, so you land right on the edge. And that won't happen. And this part here, this is the trickiest part of the level. It's honestly kind of hard to explain it while I'm trying to show it. But I kind of have to, so... Once you reach here, just jump and cape mash and take that damage boost. Again, go early. You're much better going early than late. Because you really do not want to boost backwards. And if you screwed up in the earlier part of this level, these last hooks are really going to screw you over and you're probably going to die. If you want an example of it, my AGDQ 2016 run of this makes that mistake and I die in this stage. So if you want a good example, just watch that of what happens when things go wrong in this stage. Also, when you do this boost, make sure your jump afterwards is a full jump because you don't want to get stuck on this hook right here. You don't want to get stuck on that hook. That's like, that's basically the death hook because if that happens, you see how like you basically have no room to get over everything without the invincibility. You like barely have any room there to do it. So full jump, and there you go. As long as you make it over this hook and do a little bit of cape mashing, you're fine. You don't want to be too paranoid about it. As long as you do this correctly, you'll actually have a decent amount of iframes to get through this. And the earliest, the earliest you want to jump to this flat ground here is a little bit after the hook that's behind Aladdin. Once you pass that hook, you'll be able to do a full jump and cape mash onto the flat ground without, you know, jumping into these spikes by accident and missing the ground. So that's a good little visual to have. And you still have plenty of iframes, like... See, I, I ran all the way to the archer and still had a few frames of invincibility before I died. So as long as this goes right, don't worry about having to jump really early there in case your iframes run out. Because they won't. 
as long as things go correctly. I know I said that a lot of times now, but that's the main theme of this stage is just things need to go correctly. <laughs> so just jump after the hook. There you go. Now you can apple this last sword guy and he's going to chop your apple in half. So just apple him right before you hit the ground. And you can actually completely jump over him without ha having the bounce. If that apple is too uncomfortable for you to do, then you need to jump and bounce on him. Or else he's going to throw that sword and hit you. And you basically want to jump. Just as Aladdin passes these two gems. Or even like right at the last gem. If you throw the apple here, the purpose of it is to delay that enemy from throwing his swords. And you'll be able to jump over him and save the five frames of forward momentum. Just like that. So I'll show both ways a couple times. And now with the apple. The jump over this last enemy is still a little bit tight without bouncing. So maybe you are better off just jumping earlier and taking the bounce if it happens like this. You could even still throw the apple. Because the apple throw by itself is not that bad. Even if you get stuck on the ground. Like this. Oh, what the? Like this. You still have a good amount of time before he throws the sword again. just a few more times with both strats. If you're not going to use the apple, then you want to jump and cape into bouncing on the enemy. You don't want to do a jump without any caping or else... Well, actually, never mind, you can. Don't listen to what I just said. Let me just make sure that... Yeah, you can. So you don't have to cave there if you don't want to. Now for this part here, if you want an easy audio cue for when Aladdin, or for when you'll have control over Aladdin to jump on a, guess who this is? Abu. But if you want an audio cue to know, it's the seventh note of this song. So it's like, do, 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 jump. Do, 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 jump. So I'll just show that a few times. Actually, I have to turn my TV up a little bit. Jump. 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 Just like that. He 
you can even go a little bit later too if you're not comfortable with that. But just know the seventh note of the song is when you first have control to jump with Aladdin onto Abu here. And if you want to be stylish, you can uh, do some fun stuff like this. And then right at the end here, just use your cape mashing to get to the end. Or you can just run, do whatever you want. And that'll wrap up the ancient pyramid. Or Egypt, like Patty says. But if you have any questions about anything, you can ask in the Aladdin Discord. You can message me with whatever questions you have. I'm very happy to answer them as best as I can. And I hope this helps. I will see you guys for, fortunately, the last auto scroller, and then the final world of the game.